Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another edition of Movie Masters. We are your hosts, Movie Master Mike. And Boston Boy. We are back just as mediocre as ever with another commentary podcast. Again, with the Marvel Phase 1 movies, so in Number sequence. Two. Yeah, we're doing the second movie that was released in the Marvel Phase 1, which was the same summer as Iron Man, just I think it was a month or whatever later. And this is The Incredible Hulk, starring Edward Norton and um, uh, what's her name from Lord of the Rings? Aerosmith's daughter. Oh, um, yeah, why can I? <laughs> yeah. Eh, I should have looked at a couple of these things to get yeah, yourselves yeah. prepared. It's all right. Uh, if you've never listened to one of these before, what we do is we watch the movie and we commentate during the movie and we try to talk about what's happening, our insights on the movie, our thoughts on the movie, casting, anything like that. We're critiquing it. and So it's kind of like a review as we're watching it. And we're going to start the movie at timestamp zero, so if you want to watch along with us, put your DVD or Blu-ray in, make sure it's past all the menus to timestamp zero, and hit play whatever I say. And if you feel like you've known the movie or seen the movie too Come many on. times that you don't have to watch it while listening to us, you can just listen along for the fun of it. Yeah. And when I say go, you can go ahead and hit play on your whatever you're watching it on. In three, two, two one, one, now. There we go. All right, and we should see, right, see a globe or the planet Earth. Yeah, the Universal, Universal Studios. Yeah. And I'm now bothered that I can't remember what's your name. Uh, name. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't remember it either. It's bothering me. Uh, Liv Tyler. Liv, Liv Tyler. Tyler. Right, it's Tyler. Go. I don't know. All right, let's yeah. Tyler. It's Liz or something like that. All right, we're seeing the Marvel um, logo in the, the comic book. Yeah, I love that, like the flip book where you see a bunch of And things. they've yeah, stuck cool. with that, too. Yeah. I really like how in this movie, instead of doing like an origin story again, because just, what, five years before this, Ang Lee did his Hulk. Yeah. Which was fucking weird Terrible. boring. Yeah. yeah. And they're like gigantic the size of a mountain. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, he got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. It was ridiculous. I really do think that the CG in that movie... Is still pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look holds up. It doesn't quite hold up that well, but it, for 2003, it was like, damn, really that was good, like, really yeah. good. I really liked, you know, the musculature and everything. It looked pretty good. But yeah. I like how in this movie, it's just like the opening credit sequence. You're seeing, and him. you're seeing the the origin story. Lip Tyler's assisting in the gamma, whatever the hell they're doing here. Yeah, I really like how they kind of reinvented how it happened. They're not going with what Ang Lee Hulk's did because. When the movie came out, it's like, is this a sequel? Is it a remake? Like, we don't really know because it's a different origin story. Like, they, they kind of just summarize in this, like in this flashback or opening sequence thing. But uh, you, you first see Edward Norton as Bruce Banner in South America with a beard. And at the end of Ang Lee's Hulk, he's in South America with a beard. beard yeah. So it's like, is it a sequel? Like, off, yeah. yeah, like, it's really weird. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 it's not really a sequel. I wouldn't consider it a sequel. Definitely not, yeah. I prefer this movie a billionfold of our time. Yeah, 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 far, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculously better. Hey, I can't, what's the what's the main actor's name in that one? Uh, I always forget his name. Eric Bana. Eric Bana, yeah, yeah. yeah. He wasn't a bad choice. Yeah, which his real name, I think, is a, is a, a cool name. <laughs> it could be a superhero name. Yeah, it's, it's like almost, Bruce Banner. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like Bruce Banner. I always thought that was kind of ironic. Yeah, maybe that went in partially into the decision-making. This came out on June 13th, 2008. We're seeing all the newspaper clips. and uh, Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was one about uh, him being seen in Canada, which is where he fights Wolverine for the first time yeah, in the comic book. So right. it's cool to tie little things like that into it. But they can't actually do use Wolverine, obviously, because of the Fox Marvel. Oh, right? Nick Fury, you get to see that. So that was kind of cool. You know what, I was going to jump ahead, but I'm going to go ahead and not do that. Yeah. <laughs> Written by uh, Louis Letterer. I'm not sure how to say his name, but uh, he was an up-and-coming director back then, and he did. He ended up doing uh, Clash of the Titans, oh, the remake cool. of Clash of the Titans. And here's Edward Norton. When, uh, I remember when this movie came out and Edward Norton was cast, there was a lot of backlash from fans, like, like oh, he's too good to be in a superhero movie, because at that point, there had really only been two good superhero movies. The Batman Begins... And Spider-Man 2. And Spider-Man 1 was pretty good, but 2 was far superior. Yeah. So, because, like, Daredevil kind of flop, Hulk was a flop, right. Catwoman obviously was a flop. Um, so, it's like, all we've really seen that was good was Batman Begins, because this is the same summer that The Dark Knight came out, so you couldn't really 
do that. It came out the same month, I believe, in July, right? Yeah, so this came out a week before. Cause I'm pretty sure it came out the next week, The Dark Knight did. So, yeah. So, like, it, everyone was like, oh, he's too good for a superhero movie. But I was like, what? I love Edward Norton. I love The Hulk. And yeah. I love uh, superhero movies. So, fuck it's yeah, I was excited. Truly unfortunate that he didn't stick with it because I would have loved for him to have uh, had some continuity. Yeah, yeah. Was, I think it was that exact reason. I think he thought he was too too good for it. Wasn't it something to do with that? I mean, there was other uh, no, it was like him and the, uh, the director. Like when he was hired on, like he's a big fan of comic books and stuff. So, and he's a director himself. Edward Norton is. Yeah. Oh, this is great. They show there. There's a uh, uh, Bill Bixby who played Bruce Banner in the '70s show. Oh. Okay. He was on Sesame Street and. Uh, a little clip. Yeah, he's watching the episode with Bill Bixby on Sesame Street. I think that's kind of ironic. Yeah. That's how he's learning. Uh, Portuguese, Portuguese while he's in Brazil is to watch like Sesame Street and stuff like that so and it's funny this is a, a setup for Hungary he's learning the word Hungary Hungary and yeah. later on they yeah, come back to instead of angry he says Hungary yeah. that's a good setup but um, no it was because like he's a director as well so he was very involved in the making of this movie like he'd be there with the director like with the art department talking about how the Hulk's gonna move and look and how it should act like this and he had all these ideas he was like a very big part of the making of this movie Yeah, and a lot of it ended up on the cutting room floor. Like things were completely changed around, Wait, and he was he was like, "What the fuck?" Like I put all this time and effort into helping with this movie, and you just completely changed it behind my back. Yeah. So he had like a terrible experience, and I don't know how much of that is actually true, or it's just he's like, "Oh well, the movie didn't do too well, so I don't want to do anymore." This is gross you know? right here. This guy's stomach. Yeah, well, that's a uh, Hoist Gracie's brother, or oh. he's, a, he's a Gracie. Hendo, or uh, they got all kinds of crazy freaking Brazilian names. Yeah, so yeah, he's an actual MMA fighter. You know his. Ho- Hoist Gracie is the, the famous one. The, stage, the one, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, the so. one that won the, the UFC one. And yeah. Then he got dominated a few times and no one fights, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. But I, I like this, how he's he's using this, uh, this like, jiu-jitsu or whatever kind of... Uh, martial art. Yeah, martial art like, to help it with his, his control breathing, of breathing. And his, heart, his heart rate, most importantly. Yeah, so and he's slapping there trying to edge him on to be like, you can't control this and stuff. That's cool. Yeah. This, this this whole uh, Brazil like section of the movie I just absolutely love. Really? Yeah. How he like he lives like in a crappy little apartment. He uh, he has a shitty job. He gets paid on the table. He's insanely smart. He's one of the smartest people in the the Marvel universe. But he's you know bo- you know helping bottling in soda a, in South in America. Warehouse, yeah, yeah, some warehouse like or factory rather. Yeah, factory and. It's just really cool how he, you know, like, that's what he's doing, like, to to stay away from from the government that's chasing him. Right. And that chick, I think she's, like, a some kind of famous Brazilian actress or model that they got to be in the movie. Right. This girl yeah, that he Initially, my thought was, why Brazil? Why is he... In, and later on, he come, you know, he, he's obviously on the run. He's, he's you know, but... Right. That was my initial thought. Why? Why Brazil? But then uh, at first I was thinking, oh, well, he's getting these certain flowers and, and ingredients. Maybe they can only be located in Brazil. But right. I don't think that's the case. I think that's just a, a you know, it's yeah, supposed well, to be a, a place where he thought he could stay hidden from the from the government. Yeah, and maybe you're right with the whole like, the things that he and Mister Blue are talking about making this thing to help with the gamma radiation poisoning that he has in his body. So maybe you're right. Maybe South America is a place where he can find those things, and he kind of knew that. So that's why he went there instead of. Killed two birds with one stone. Yeah, instead of somewhere else where he could have won. But I like how up here, <laughs> that blood looks absolutely terrible. Yeah. That is some really bad CG. But I always loved this idea how he freaks out and he has to get the blood out of the, the soda. And yeah. everyone's like, what the fuck? Right. Like, we don't care when blood falls into that soda. <laughs> 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 it adds to the flavor. It's good. I'm just amazed that like everyone kind of went along with it. Like, this... The owner of this factory just like, oh yeah, shut it down. I don't care. It's like, hmm. yeah, right. Like he probably would never let it, and then yeah, and just be okay with it. Like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah. But there's a lot of deleted scenes in this uh, whole movie, really. But in this, like, you actually see him like gathering the pieces to make the uh, the machinery to like when he gets the flower and everything, he has to make the serum that ultimately doesn't work. Right. But, like you know, like, in the lab, you got to spin everything to make sure it's like mixed together or whatever he uses like a bike tire to right. spin it like you actually see him like collecting those things and stuff like that and I mean they're not necessary for the movie but going back and like watching all the, the uh, deleted scenes it's like oh okay that kind of it makes the movie a much longer and fairly more boring movie right. for an incredible Hulk movie therefore it's edited and I, I yeah. really feel like a lot of the beginning could have been edited and cut short like of this for stuff? example 
Yeah, like what you were just mentioning, the Mr. Green, Mr. Blue, a lot of it's corresponding. And they, I think they spent a long time, and we'll, we'll be there in a moment, but they spent a long time with them corresponding and, and stuff like that. I think that could have been added into the beginning credits, just like everything else. Like, oh, he's corresponding, he's in, you know what I mean? Like, they could have cut yeah, out yeah. a lot of this. And yeah, they could have established. Like this. I feel like this goes on a little too long. I mean, it doesn't take so long for him to become Hulk. And again, we'll be there in a moment. But yeah, I actually really enjoy the first time he hulks out, just because you don't quite see him, and I right. really like that because that he harkens back to like uh, old like monster movies where you don't really see the monster, especially at first. Yeah. You save it. And I think I mentioned to somebody while talking about this that the 2014 Godzilla took that too fucking far, where you right. never saw never fucking see Godzilla. Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. So, and it wasn't. It was anticlimactic. I mean, it was yeah. pretty cool, but I mean, yeah. it wasn't awesome enough to to hold out that long. Yeah. And I do like how, like, when you actually do see the Hulk for, like, the first time, it's in, like, broad daylight in a field, right. kicking shit, and, you know, like, throwing tanks at each other. So I was like, fuck yeah, that's fucking badass. This chick's hot. I wish they had more of her in the movie. Yeah, like like yeah, I was saying, like, she's some she sort of, like, either model or actress in South America. And, uh, yeah. But it seems like they should have got a, maybe a bigger role for her, because like, he just doesn't do anything. They could replace maybe one of these correspondence scenes uh, with a lovemaking scene. <laughs> no, because later in the movie... He's you see that, yeah, yeah, right yeah. Now. He, you know, but he can't even have sex with her because he'd get too excited and maybe Hulk out. Oh, uh, Hulk out on her? So, oh, yeah. man, imagine that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I love Edward Norton as Bruce Banner. Bruce like, Banner. he seems so nerdy. Like, he, like I could totally picture you him didn't working on that. know Edward Norton and haven't seen movies like American History X, yeah. Right, yeah, but uh, you see, you know, this, and you can just totally picture him being that kind of scientist nerd and, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, they, they well, did spend in, a little bit of time here. They could have maybe cut this down, maybe not put it into the into the beginning credits where it's just kind of barely seen. Yeah. Maybe cut down a bit because you're right. Like it's like okay, he's talking. It takes a while. I think he does it again later. And yeah, but then again, and, like uh, he just got a package from somebody with this flower in it. So maybe the flower isn't local. Like it had to be shipped in. So maybe he's not there for true. that reason. So but it seemed well. He he got that from the guy that said. Isn't that what that deal was about? He shook the guy's hand and. Was that containing this flower? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so maybe... Maybe it was shipped to him from someone. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, it was probably local. You're right. Like, if that just local... Yeah, like this machine here. Wheel. Yeah, the bike wheels and stuff. Like, it shows him, like, just gathering those things together. and stuff. It's so, like, I, I like things like that. I don't mind a slow-paced movie with, a, you know, an actual story and stuff. And I, mean, I guess those scenes are pointless because you see it made. You don't really know how... You has to know how. You see like, yeah, it's a bike tire. You, you probably just found it. It's fucking... It's, uh, yeah, to watch him buying the wife beater he's wearing, <laughs> yeah. you know, how, how much story. That's true. But, like, oh, the Hulk is gone in the cells. That's kind of cool how they show it. Like, it's it's like a cellular thing. Like, it's yeah. attacking his cell, cells. It's not just... Overrun by the Hulk. Yeah, like, that's fucking about it. It breaks the slide glass. glass. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome. I was to say, there, there actually is a part in this movie where they show him buying clothing, which yeah. probably could have been cut out. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's, that's great, cool. but because it, it's, a, it's a little joke, because he's like, purple pants? Yeah, was a, <laughs> yeah. yeah I noticed he was a throwback to that, yeah. and he doesn't get it. Yeah, and what I really, really like about this movie is throughout the movie, it does harken back to the old show with Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno. Yeah. Like, he's, uh, he's constantly moving, which they continued with into the Avengers movie. He was moving from place to place. Yeah. And, uh... You know, he uses fake names. They even use the sad walking away piano music in this yeah. movie. He's not walking away, unfortunately, but it's uh, it's after he leaves Brazil. After he hulks out in Brazil, he he, he wakes up in Mexico, and he's yeah. he's all torn up because his clothes are all ripped, and he's sitting there like kind of with his hand out, like just like laying there. And they, and play the poor, scenes, huh? they they play the sad walking away you know, music, and some kid gives him gives him money. money. Yeah. yeah, when I was watching, I was watching with my son. He's like, that kid stole my, or who was I watching with? Someone else and. No, he didn't steal it. He gave it to him. <laughs> but anyway, uh, until you mentioned that just now, I forgot all about the sad walking away music. But that was so prevalent in the, in the in show. In the show, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, William Hurt here playing uh, Thunderbolt Ross. Oh, it's this Stanley, Stanley cameo. cameo. This is probably maybe not his best cameo, but his most well, important yeah, cameo yeah, because it actually, it actually has something to do with the, the plot. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. this is what tips the government office to where Bruce Banner is. Like, it's actually a plot point. Most of his other ones, it's just like, oh, he was just that guy in the background, or... Well, they don't really ever get to, as far as I know, is what actually happened to him. I mean, did he hulk out? I mean, probably not, but... Probably in some form, yeah, like, some form Gigantic, of... Gigantic, you just got, like, some elephant, what it called, Titus <laughs> disease. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you picture Stan Lee with elephant Titus? <laughs> <laughs> like, shades of green? That'd be <laughs> hilarious. 
But uh, William Hurt playing Thunderbolt Ross, um, I think he looks the part. Like, look at him. Like, he looks like Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah. The mustache, the the squinty eyes. Like, I don't know. For some reason, like, that's what I think Thunderbolt Ross looks like. Is right there. That's a good, yeah, adaptation. But um, I remember when we did our um, draft day review, I said that, um, what's his name? Sam Elliott was in Hulk as Thunderbolt Ross. He was also in Ghost Rider as the former Ghost Rider that kind of trains him. Oh, yeah, okay, right. That's right. true, man. But yeah. in Ang Lee's Hulk, he was Thunderbolt Ross, and you think, oh, like, oh, it? he's got the gray hair and the mustache. Like, he looks perfect, too, but I just think he's a little too thin. Yeah. Like, Sam Elliott's a thin guy. And William Hurd, you know, now maybe he's, you know, gained some pounds. He's, you know... One of those guys that isn't a thin old man. He's not a fat old man either, but right. But he's got the rounder face and yeah, you know he's got so a common kind of belly and stuff. So, but I just think overall he looks more like a military man than Sam Elliott. Now, what do you think about this guy, Tim, Tim Roth? Tim Roth, yeah, as Blonsky. Um, I like it. I think it's funny how like he's British. Right, but Blonsky's obviously like a Russian or well, like not only is he British, he's playing an American soldier. No, no, well, well, no. The thing is, like, he's Russian. They say in the movie like he's Russian, raised in Britain, and now he's you know some kind of American, American military. Spy. It's like the what? Like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But you know, it's movies. It's he's also books. not like honorable in this movie. He doesn't care about anybody. Oh yeah, yeah, he just wants to get whatever target he's getting. He's almost like a mercenary. Right, but um. Tim Roth is one of those actors that usually plays the like he's usually the same in every role. Well, so it's like you see a Tim. A movie yeah, with Tim I watched Roth. one that that lie to me show, which was interesting to me because I read a lot of books about lie detection and stuff. But right, yeah, I remember. I also watched the movie. Probably my favorite part with him is um, uh, Scary Game or is that Funny Games? Funny, Funny games. games. Have you seen that? No. It's it's a little known movie, but I thought it was excellent, man. I thought it was so awesome. Maybe we can watch that and do a review on that, but. Yeah. Uh, Definitely recommend it. You should watch it. All right. Well, I mean, is he the same type of character where he's like no. kind of the bad guy? And no, he plays like a family man, like the father. Huh. But uh, <laughs> it's such a screwed up movie. Right. It was the first movie we've ever seen where a child gets killed like mercilessly. Wow. Like I always thought they couldn't do that because for so long I'd never seen it. Not that I think that's a good thing, but it does make for a brutal movie that affects you. Or it did right. for me anyway. Yeah, something that stands out and sticks with you. Yeah. I love all these shots, like that opening shot where you first see Brazil, like it's going up the hill of all the apartments, it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps yeah, going. It's just, it's just like ghetto. Yeah, it's yeah. like, damn, everything's just built right on top, top of each other. Yeah. It's crazy. Avalanche, everyone's dead. Yeah. Pretty much. And a lot of people are just packed up in there. Mm. It's really, he has a dog, you know? And then they show him dead. Yeah. But that's another dog, right? I think yeah, that was, that was a different dog. That another one. Yeah. That's why his dog kind of made a... Nice. It's crazy how they found him like specifically in you know the city of God, this huge city with millions of people. Yeah, <laughs> and they no zoned in on this one little apartment. <laughs> the dog, <laughs> the dog eats damn it. dog, get rid of the dog. I think he says, "Get rid of the dog." Yeah, that's the worst. You know, I don't know if I'd say worse than child children getting hurt in movies, but. Is up there. I hate seeing animals get killed. Watched yeah. uh, what do you call it last night? Walking Dead, and there's a part where a horse is like brutally eaten by zombies. And oh, it's terrible. Might have seen in um, I Am Legend with Will Smith, where he has to like suffocate his own dog, his only friend in the movie. Yeah, it's like oh, it's like the saddest part. In a bad movie, by the way, I don't <laughs> like the chick it. that he like works with, like the smoking hot model. Lives just right, lives right, right below him, yeah. Like, what it happens to him? He's like, shh. Like, she's all down for it right now. Like, yep, he yeah. could just molest Well, he, like, he, like, saved her from oh, those ugly right. guys trying and to raise like, her. Yeah. <laughs> the good looking American that works with her. I mean, who else? Yep. He's like, just got out of the shower. She's all, like, wet and stuff. Yeah. Had to be right at that moment. Yep. Well, it's Hollywood. Yeah. This is kind of a cool chasing where, like, he's not the Hulk. It's just Bruce Banner running, you know? He's just, oh, yeah, and. <laughs> yeah, there's talking. just some random white guy. Of course that's him. Yeah. It wouldn't even take more than a moment before you start chasing him. It was way too long of a pause. Yeah, they like stared each other down like, please don't notice me. <laughs> they end up at the factory that he works at. Yeah. You have to be in such good shape to run like this. 
Or the military guys? I would just give up. Like, okay, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I well, mean know. him? Yeah, Bruce well, Banner, yeah. Really, Bruce Banner, yeah. Yeah, I think earlier they did they, a... Uh, they showed a clip of him, like, running. Like, that was one of his exercises to yeah. help with his uh, heart monitoring. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, he's in shape. I mean, he's going to hoist Gracie's brother or whoever that is, cousin. Or, yeah. I'm not sure he doesn't play Gracie or whatever, but maybe he does. Perhaps. I mean, they're in Brazil. Yeah. They're playing jiu-jitsu. Yeah, yeah jiu-jitsu. I guess they don't say it way, so he plays whoever you want him to be. Yeah. <laughs> the guy just fell between those buildings. I think it would be harder for these military guys to run and keep up with them with all the gear that they're wearing. Right. But he's got a backpack on, I guess. Yeah. But he's still just wearing, like, pants and a, and a shirt. They're yeah. wearing, like, heavy gear and belts and a big gun. Giant guns, which are very heavy. Yeah. I mean, just their belts probably weigh 15 pounds. Yeah. Ooh, bad shot guy. All right. I, I really do hate that in movies where you take a hundred shots at a guy. Like, these are trained assassins. Like, I can hit that guy from that distance, you know? Yeah, and then the good guy always seems to get him on the first shot. Right. Yeah, Tim Roth, I was gonna, let's get back to him. Like, to me, he's usually the same kind of, like, quiet, not really mumbling, but because he's British, like, the way he talks, like, it's kind of, like, under his breath almost. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like so yeah, that's just his normal accent, but he doesn't like change the way he acts. Like it just seems his demeanor and yeah. But I think he makes for a good uh, mercenary, yeah, crazy heartless. mercenary guy. Yeah, he just all he wants is kill the guy, and then later, like when he sees. The power of the Hulk is like, what the fuck? He's like, I want that. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing that comes to his mind. Yeah. I love the way he says, like, <clears throat> when he's explaining to Thunderbolt Ross about, you know, what he encountered. <laughs> he bumps into the bullies from... Yeah, from that's the that's a little ridiculous. Yeah, you're in a, you know, whatever uh, town, whatever you want to call it, filled with thousands of people. It's overrun, and the one person you run directly into <laughs> the is the guy that wants more. to kick your ass. Yeah. Who's hanging out like at some kind of bar right next to the shitty factory that he works at? Yeah, so you wouldn't have been in any other part. Follows of town. you in with a gang of people. <laughs> yep, that are all willing to just come fight you for no reason with this guy. Yeah, maybe in Brazil, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, the way he is, he's explaining like he threw a forklift truck like it was a softball. Like mm-hmm. it's like that just sticks out in my mind. Like that's hilarious to me. Yeah. The Hulk like the Hulk throws a forklift like <laughs> like it was a softball. Yeah. I think that's funny. Gringo. Yeah, the bullies get there before the mercenaries do. How easy would it be to get laid in a place like Brazil? I was thinking about that, like, man, that would be cool. Just take your pick. I'm sure they'd be aching for it, you know what I mean? I don't know. I... You think? You think they'd stick with all the same guys that they've got there? I think the same thing about Japan, like, you know, they want to check out the white guy, you know? Yeah, I guess. May have. Oh, here's where he says the, uh, is this where he says the hungry line? No, I think it was earlier, wasn't it? Oh, no, it's right, I think it's coming, yeah, we would have seen it. I think it's right here. Or no, was it earlier? I don't remember seeing that at all. No, I think when he, uh, it was earlier. I don't know, maybe it's right here. No, it was in the factory. Dude. Oh, okay, maybe. No, yeah, he's not yeah. angry. Yeah, the first time he's just hungry. Yeah, it was earlier when uh, when the bullies were trying to get with yeah, the girl. Yeah, we were he, talking yeah. through it. Yeah. Very hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just looks ridiculous. Well, now they're getting shot. He's punched out of sight. Precisely uh, 200 I love that minute. shot. Yeah. His eyes turn green in the shadow. It looks right. just like the old TV show. And I used to watch the old TV show a lot in the, the 90s, like on the Sci-Fi Channel, like in the afternoon. I don't know if I did a it. lot, but I've seen, I've seen a few episodes. I, mean, I don't remember anything specific yeah, from it. But... Just looking like crap. <laughs> <Like green laughs> yeah. Paint. When I was a kid, I was just like, yeah, the hog, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I wasn't worried about how cheesy it looked and how stupid it was, but right. I remember a lot of like, I remember like more of like the movies that they made, like um, 
The one where he fights uh, Thor, which is just the stupid, stupidest thing in the world. There's an episode where he fights Thor in the yeah. show? That's yeah, cool. it was uh, one of the like, TV movies that they did. They did like two uh-huh. or three of them. Really? Yeah, there's one where, where he's with Thor and another one where he's with Daredevil, actually. Nice. Yeah, yeah I like how you, in this movie you don't quite see the Hulk at all. It's really badass. I think... I don't think ILM... I mean, right here at this point, you're saying? You yeah, yeah, at this point in the movie where you don't quite see him. Yeah. He's always in shadow and smoke and steam and stuff. Like I think that's really cool as like your initial uh, encounter with the Hulk. Right. It was kind of the same with Ang Lee's Hulk. Like the first time he, he does it, he's in the hospital. He kind of stays in the shadow, but but this is way better in every way. <laughs> just completely... I think this part, yeah, the way he walks away, he's just getting shot at, like... Not running, not trying to dodge the bullets or anything, you know? Yeah, well, he's the like, Hulk there. Right, but it just looks so cool. He's just slowly walking. Yeah, he's just like... Pfft. I actually like the look of the Hulk in the Avengers so much more than this movie. It's been a while since I watched it in contrast to this, you know? It, it, yeah. Each time there's been such a huge gap in between, so I'll have to, yeah. we'll be watching Marvel like, or Avengers soon enough, I'm sure. Because like, in this one, like they kind of tried to make it look like Edward Norton... Like, a little bit, like, they did, like, the whole, like, I don't know what if the technology has changed at all, but, like, they spray Edward Norton's face with, like, like uh, some kind of paint, mm. and they put him, like, in a black light, it's like, black light paint almost, so he, like, makes all these different faces, and they can record his facial movements and stuff, and kind of place that over the Hulk, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't look... I always thought the Hulk, that they weren't even trying to go for, like, looking anything like him, because it looks so different from him, you know? In this movie? I think so, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I initially thought. And then, like watching special special features and like seeing him like doing those things, I was like, okay, like it, it, it has similarities. some similarities. Yeah, but I like that shot where he's walking through the smoke. That was awesome. Yeah, graphics are cool. But uh, in the Avengers, they make the Hulk look so much like Mark Ruffalo. It's ridiculous. Really. But I don't think I was gonna say I don't think that ILM or Weta did the CG for this. I think it was digital. Domain. But I mean, probably show his face for the first time just there. Yeah. I like how they, they constantly get Lou Ferrigno back to do the voice of the Hulk in everything. Yeah. Like an Ang Lee's Hulk, if he talked, they had Ang Lee do it in this one. You know, right here. Or did he already say it? Yeah, he already said he's like, leave me alone. Oh, yeah. Like that was Lou Ferrigno. And I think in Avengers, they did a cross between Lou Ferrigno, Mark Ruffalo, and then, like, Drew and... Well, when he's talking, I think it was just those two. Uh, maybe somebody else did something, but when he screamed, it was the two actors and then, like, lions or whatever roaring they added in. Yeah. Yeah, that's where he's explaining it. Like, <laughs> it was like a softball. Just <laughs> I think it's hilarious, especially the way he says it. And this part here, like... Without knowing yet that she's his daughter, you know she's his daughter, you know? Yeah. She's no longer a factor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's all he has to say. I'm trying to look up, uh... Who did the CG for this movie, and it wasn't Digital Domain... In the same summer, Digital Domain did The Mummy, Tomb of the Emperor, Dragon Emperor, which is a shitty fucking movie. Yeah. Speed Racer, which is a shitty fucking movie. Actually, I no, I've never even seen it. No, I haven't seen Speed Racer. It looked really fucking Yeah, shitty. it looks bad. I don't think anyone's really watched that one. Yeah, Jumper, which could have been good, but it really wasn't. Yeah, the... Well, the fact that he is the guy from Star Wars that played, you know, uh, Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. It's cool, but I, I never liked him being the choice as Anakin. Right, in the yeah, first yeah, place, yeah. So. And actually, um, I never minded him as Anakin. It was just because he didn't do a super terrible job with the shitty fucking material that he was given. Right. I mean, Sam Jackson, he's a good actor most of the time. Like, if you give him like a role that's good for him, he's good. You know, like he's good as Nick Fury. I mean, they based Black Nick Fury in the comics <laughs> on him. So he was really the perfect casting choice, but um, but he did a shitty fucking job in those Star Wars prequels. He was so boring and so everything sucked. His performance, every line he said was just terrible. 
Yeah. So it's like it's not Hayden or Hayden Christensen's fault for being so shitty in those movies. It's just they were shitty movies. She's shitty script. Like I don't know. I think it's just more his face. I just think uh, I don't know. But then again, how else do you want Anakin Skywalker to look? But yeah, that's true. And he awakes in this gorgeous landscape <laughs> yeah. waterfall. Yeah, all these rocks and beautiful plants and stuff. I like this, how it's like days without an incident. I heard it earlier, it was like 128 or whatever it was. And now it's one. This right here, where he's walking through the jungle, actually looks like the exact scene from the very end of Ang Lee's Hulk, where they're kind of just like in the jungle. And yeah. it looks like this exact location. May very well be. Yeah, it probably it could be. He's like, what? Oh, he's in Guatemala, yeah. He speaks Spanish, so... Huh. He's like, fuck, I'm... <laughs> he jumped, basically... Probably not one jump, obviously, but... Yeah. He jumped, like, ran as the Hulk from, uh... Brazil to Guatemala? Yeah, but, uh, what was the city there just in? Um, San Paulo? No, no, no. Um, Rio de what's the city of God with the giant statue of Jesus with his arms out? I don't know. Rio de Janeiro? Rio de Janeiro, yeah, yeah, there oh, it is. Okay. So you went from Rio de Janeiro to wh wherever in Guatemala. And this right here, where, he, where he's basically explaining how the Hulk was made. And you learn that Thunderbolt Ross was trying to recreate the super soldier serum that Captain America yeah, used yeah. in the 40s. Right. But he couldn't quite do it. So he had Banner working on it, but he told Banner he was doing something else. So when Banner tested on himself, Banner didn't know that he was using Gamma to help uh, correct the Super Soldier Serum. He thought he was working on Gamma or something else. So when he tested on himself, he didn't know, like, I'm, turn I'm, try I'm testing myself to become a Super yeah, Soldier. Soldier. Like, yeah. he didn't know that, so... How could you do proper research without knowing what the hell you were doing? Yeah, that? exactly. Like, that's... Now, here it is, <laughs> the sad walking away music. You'll be able to hear it, but... Yeah. yeah. I know the song. Yeah, the, the poor kid gives him, gives him money because he just looks so happy. It would be so much funnier if he took money and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty funny, but but not very uh, Banner-like. Yeah. No, I'm saying if the kids oh. took money from him, here's the broken Yeah, here's the, yeah. Not quite. It's funny how he does this next to the fat girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of those fat flat butts. Yep. It's stretchy. Yeah. He's trying to buy stretchy pants. Moss stretch. Ah, stretchy. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Sleepy on the side of the road. Face against like a, a shed door. Mm -hmm. He's still... Wait, is he still in South America? We'll cut him um, on. I guess that's North America. America. Yeah. Maybe it's right here where he learns everything, but... Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool how... Yeah, yeah, it's this scene. And then at the end of this movie, which you already saw Nick Fury at the end of Iron Man, then you see Tony Stark at the end of this movie talking to Thunderbolt Ross, which I thought was really weird, didn't make any sense. Not because they were connected, but because, like, why would he go to Ross about the Hulk? And they don't play it after the credits. I, I kind of was upset by that. This one, oh yeah, you know, so after the like, credits, there's a scene in most of them. This one, yeah, didn't. it's it's just the last scene of the movie. Yeah, yeah, for him and Tony Stark. Yeah, yeah, it should have been at the end of the credits, but whatever. Uh, what was I saying? Um, um, oh, how they change like to where uh, that's that's more of. Like, it was, um, like why Tony Stark would go to see Thunderbolt Ross it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense like, so I guess he would be your best chance like you know where is he how can I find him but you know Thunderbolt Ross hasn't really had any luck Yeah. but it's what he says to him like uh, he's like I, I told you uh, hardware was better than um, gene splicing or something yeah or like you know, genetics or whatever right it's like, you know, because he, he's doing hardware to make missiles and armor and stuff instead of genetically altering people to make super soldiers. But when it worked for Captain America, it didn't half work for the Hulk. Yeah. 
And I like how he's basically saying, we made a serum, but it's not quite Captain America. Yeah. But we'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Try it out. Just buying my gross spikes. Well, that, that's not until later. Like, it'll make him crazy. Because, like, later when <clears throat> when he does get the, the Hulk serum mm. from uh, Mr. Blue, Mr. Blue says, like, you got a little bit of something in you already. Because he mm. has Thunderbolt Ross's serum that's not quite good enough to be put onto the military market to make super soldiers. It's still testing or whatever. And right. Wasi just wants it so bad. And Thunderbolt Ross wants to take the Hulk down so bad that he's willing to... to t- to give it to Blonsky. Right. Like, a lot of the stuff, like, I just kind of, like, kind of just assumed that. Yeah. You know, like, they didn't really straight up tell us, I have a serum, I'm going to give it to you to fight the Hulk because I want the Hulk so badly. But it might make you crazy. Like, they didn't straight up tell us that. Yeah. But that's what happens, so I kind of surmised it. Kind of the implication. Yeah, uh, but this scene, Edward Norton actually directed this scene, I believe. Oh. By like, the way, uh, Birdman, he, he's in Birdman. Yeah, yeah. Again, if you haven't seen that, that's, uh, I recommend it. was pretty good. And yeah, one best picture. Oh, did it win? Yeah, I think I so. Thought it was, I thought it was up, and it was it was highly tutored as uh, something that would win, but it, it didn't, I thought. but uh, Maybe one best actor and director, but I thought it was picture and director. Could be, but... Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe one of them, maybe there's, I mean, there's Golden Glo- Globes and all these different ones, but... Mm. Anyway, yeah, he did very good. I mean, it's a movie about actors talking about acting the whole time. You know what I mean? And he's mm-hmm. he doesn't play himself, but he he's a he's a very good actor, which we already know. Yeah. But anyway, so I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but uh, yeah, because like yeah, um, in making movies, like there's you know second units that are directing scenes, you know, while the main director is directing scenes, like things are happening simultaneously and stuff. So it's not you know one director directs every single shot of every you know, in the whole movie. Yeah. So, like, in that last scene where he had to kind of, uh, he was looking to get in the, into the, the school, but there was a security guard, so he was like, fuck. So he had to kind of walk away. Like, he was the guy that kind of directed it. So he's directing himself, basically, because, you know, he was in that scene. And that, that part right there a moment ago where he just looked so in love, I thought his facial expression was really good there. It's like, yeah. oh, like, so relieved to see her and smitten by her. <laughs> I think it's funny, uh, this actor that's that just walked up to and is now walking away with Betty Ross holding he's in hands. A lot of things, yeah. And he's in a uh, Modern Family, the show Modern oh, Family. Oh yeah, yeah. But in this one, he's like a uh, generic boyfriend that's there just to fill in for, for the main love. Yeah. And in 2010 or 11 or whenever National Treasure Two came out, he was the generic side boyfriend of uh, the main characters. Interest, yeah, the love interest in that movie. Like, he was just there to kind of, like, oh, yeah, because we like we split up. So I started dating this guy just to kind of fill in. and just going to give me a bone. Uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> so, <laughs> I think it's funny that he, he played, like, that exact role, basically, in two completely different movies. Huh. It's kind of cool. I had to kind of throw in, like, they do actually have a history. They had a pizza joint that they went to all the time when they were at college and working together and they were in love. Yeah, this like, guy that well where he did them a favor. He looks like Einstein, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he does. But, that, you know, little things like that where, you know, that this didn't have to happen. It's just kind of cool. It's like, it kind of builds up that him and Ben Ross did know each other. It wasn't just, oh, we worked together, together we were in love, yeah. and we only shared a screen time together, and we're only in love because the script says we're in love. Right. Like this actually tells you that, uh, you know, they used to go there all the time, and mm. you know when they were together, or maybe just when they were in school and working together, they didn't have to be like a couple when they went there. But you know, they both know the I owner so well. Him. Yeah, yeah, Lou Ferrigno. He's he made a cameo in Ang Lee's Hulk as well as a security guard in that one too, mm. which is, well, for the school. Oh no, no, it was for the research company that he worked for. But it was a security guard. So, is it the same continuity? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, obviously not. No. <laughs> My friend was like, pizza, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Do whatever you want. Huh. Maybe it was <laughs> that scene that he directed. I think it was the other oh, scene. Oh, man, I'm did. hungry for pizza. I'm hungry for anything I haven't eaten. Mm, I love pizza. I eat pizza every day. Anyway, he basically just snuck his way into, <laughs> into the research labs at, at a, a college in like Virginia. I forget which college it is. I used to know. I forget it now. Yeah. Oh, wait. It's uh, Culver. Culver. Is it Culver? Yeah, I think it said it actually. Culver University. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 
There's flashbacks right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, he's yeah. there with Liz Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where it happened, where it all went it down. It doesn't have to bribe this other kid with pizza, too? I don't recall. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah, is. There it like, is. Yeah, dude. That kid's in a few things. Didn't even have a speaking part. <laughs> he just, just smiles and waves him. pizza at him. Mm -mm. That's hilarious. Hacking into Betty Ross's files. <laughs> this Norton 360. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. funny. Edward Norton. Not necessary to throw that in there. Like, oh, it's got antivirus software. How about that? <laughs> It's just funny that his, the actor's last name is Norton. How did you feel about Liv Tyler as the role of Betty Ross? Um, I've never loved her in general. I think she's she's very pretty, but at the same time, if she wasn't Steven Tyler's daughter, I don't know that anyone would know who she is, you know? Yeah, that's um, true. I, I like that she's in Lord of the Rings. I think that's probably my favorite role. I think she kind of works as an elf, you know? She's got the long face and the dark, straight hair, you know? Yeah, yeah. Although elves sometimes have light hair. But anyhow, um, uh, she works. Um, I'm interested to see who they'll recast her, if they ever do put Betty Ross in another Marvel movie. I don't think it really matters. I mean, no. as long as it's a pretty girl. Yeah, I um, I don't like Liv Tyler nearly as much as I love Jennifer Connelly in the role, mm -hmm. Lee's Hulk. Right, I thought yeah, she was right. a much better choice. And yeah, sad I just like Jennifer, Jennifer Connelly. A lot of people don't like her eyebrows, Jennifer Connelly. I don't yeah. see why that's even in the conversation. No, I don't care. But look at this fucking guy's eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> the Einstein guy or the generic Einstein boyfriend guy. guy? Well, him too. <laughs> No, more the Einstein guy. Yeah. He's got some freaking eyebrows on him, too. <laughs> Looks like an AIDS patient. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this guy? Yeah. Because he's just so pale, or what? He just looks like he's ill. Yeah, I guess he kind of does. But back to... Uh, Lutal. Yeah, I, I don't. Her breasts look large in this movie, and they're not. I think she did get implants. I think I remember thinking that when I watched this movie, because prior to this movie, she's always had very small breasts. So maybe she's wearing padding there. They're like, no, we want a large-breasted woman. I've always wondered if her lips are, you know, implants. she grew up with a lot of money. You know, well, you can get lip jobs or whatever. Yeah, or yeah. Pump no, because her dad has lips like that. Yeah, he too, has those so. giant freaking lips. Yeah, he's so ugly. <laughs> I'm sure he was with a beautiful woman, though. But I don't know. I don't really like Liv Tyler in anything I've really seen her in. Like, even Lord of the Rings, like, it's like, ah, uh, it's okay, but... Yeah, she speaks Elvin and whatever, but... Yeah, I just... What I don't well, quite like in, her in this. I think her first big movie was, um... Um, I want to say it's not Apocalypse. The one about the, the rocket ship goes up to the moon, or goes up to the crater and blows Oh, and Armageddon? Armageddon. No, Armageddon. no, that, well, that might have been her first, like, major Big time role. movie. Because I remember yeah. Steve Tyler, like, wrote that, that song jaded for movie it. or something. One of those movies, or songs, rather. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually do like that song. I think it's a good song. Is it Jaded? Is that the no, one? No, no, it's not Jaded. It's, um... I um, it's called. like, I miss you so much, or some, something yeah. in that sense. Wish you were here, you know? Is that something else? No, no, it's a, um, <laughs> it's a, um, I can't sing, but, um, you can just say the words. I don't want to miss a thing. Oh. I like that, that song. Yeah, it's alright. But I remember, like, that was, like, all the lead in, like, I don't want to miss a thing was, like, <laughs> the previews for that movie. Anything you saw was just that. And, like, showing her face, you know? Yeah. So, what about this movie you <laughs> want us to watch? Yeah, it was like also I, during a time where I watched I things like MTV and music videos. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I looked her. I don't know. I just don't quite like her. I don't like her voice really. I agree, yeah. So, so I'm saying like, you know, I've always felt that if not for Steve Tyler, I don't think anyone would know she exists. Yeah, probably not. Somebody would, but not, not us. So her first big role... Well, she was in Silent Fall in 1994, before she was in her dad's music video for Crazy, where her and her like friend were like getting naked and dancing for each other. That's kind of uh, a weird thing to put your daughter in a video. I know. Even, even 
That, the Armageddon thing was kind of weird, you know? Yeah. Pimping out your daughter. And then she was in a movie called Heavy in 1995, because about the Aerosmith... Oh, Empire Records. Yeah, right. that was the first thing. Kind of bigger. Yeah. I like that Empire Records. That's a good movie, but she, it's not good because of her. Right. When uh, was Armageddon? That was... Uh, like 1998? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. U-Turn? She was in U-Turn? Was Isn't she there a lot of U-turn? sex in that movie? Isn't Jennifer Lopez? Jennifer yeah. Lopez. Yeah, Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, she's in that movie. That was a good movie. That was a sick movie. I don't recall. I think I watched it. Yeah. Stealing Beauty. That's the one where, like, that dude from uh, a TV show with Helen Hunt. I don't know. I, I by the way, despise Helen Hunt. <laughs> it's got uh, John Goodman. <laughs> All right. Is, that, is this the movie I'm thinking of? Maybe it's a different movie. I don't know. Yeah. It was this weird movie where, I think it was John Goodman and the dude from that TV show were like both in love with her. It was really weird. She was in Inventing the Abbots. Yeah, I remember that movie. I don't know anything about it. I think you do Jamie. Oh, okay. I remember her in that show or that movie. My wife, Jamie, watches that. Oops. Over and over and over. And then that retarded song gets stuck in my head constantly. It drives me nuts. Oh, so, yeah, back to the Hulk. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's Liv Tyler. crappy movies, Liv, Liv Tyler's man. Yeah. Like, this scene where she, like, is staying at her house. She's like, I can sell you or give you my, my necklace. She's like, oh, you can't do that. But, yeah, okay. Can I borrow some cash? <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of deleted scenes from this whole yeah. house sequence. Like, a lot of them. Some of them were even in the previews for the movie. Huh. Where... He's talking to her generic boyfriend in the middle of the night by the fire because, like, Edward Norton wakes up and he's out there drinking and you know, he's, like, basically, like, <laughs> you know, like, what am I going to do? Like, the love of her life kind of just waltzes back in here. Of course, I'm going to be <laughs> drinking my problems away, you know? Yeah. But uh, he's a psychiatrist in the movie. Generic boyfriend is a psychiatrist. And they're talking and he's saying, like, you know, like oh, I have a problem. He's like, oh, they tell me. I've heard, heard them all. He's like, no, not this one. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was in the previews, like all of the previews, and it wasn't in the movie. And there's a lot of stuff about like a music box or something. And that just, seems like something they should have kept in. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of like maybe not every single deleted scene from this house sequence, but right. that one especially should have stayed in the movie, especially since it was in the previews. Right. It kind of added like, you know, him talking. I feel like that face that she just made when she put her hands. That's, that's something that's a face she made in another movie. By the way, Tim Roth. <laughs> Well, not in this scene. Later on, maybe he's in the mirror and he's like scrawny, like as scrawny as you can be. It's like this guy is like a military, guy. military, like top rank guy. Like in Edward Norton, the nerd is in better shape than him. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, I think that was uh, when he was sickly, wasn't it? Like because the serum he's about to get here from the military. Makes uh, him, well, I guess yeah, he looks worse than this. Yeah, because it, it probably you know, messes with his DNA because they're about to inject him with all these things like, you know, his bones and stuff, so. He's got, like, two, like, eight-inch needles in either side of his throat. Yeah, kind of makes simultaneously. It, yeah, yeah, he, he just makes a little face like, eh, a little okay. discomforted. Yeah, the one in the spine, that one hurts a little bit. Yeah. Did you know, he was Warner Brothers' first pick to play Professor Snape in Harry Potter. Oh, he would have worked. I... I think it would have worked for a little bit, but then he would have just became Tim Roth. Like, like I said, like, I think he just Tim Roth is Tim Roth in every movie yeah. that he does. So, and it was actually well, the author's uh, J.K. Rowling's first choice for uh, Alan Rickman. Like when she was like writing the book, she pictured Alan Rickman playing the role. So when Tim Roth didn't work out, they got Alan Rickman. So she's like, "Yes, my dream has you know, been fulfilled." Mm-hmm. And rumor has it that. She pulled Alan Rickman aside during the filming of the first movie and told him secrets about, like, the seventh book, which at the time the first movie came out, only, like, three or four of the books had been out at that point. Yeah. So, like, Alan Rickman knew, like, the ending or whatever what since 2000. She already knew what she was going to do. That's yeah. That's kind of cool. Because, like, I, I know you don't really like Harry Potter, but right. Snape is, like, what, like a triple agent you know, like, he's a bad guy, then he's a good guy, then he's a bad guy, then he's a good guy. Like, he's working for everybody, and, like, nobody really knows who or why or what. Kind of like, uh, kind of like the spider in Game of Thrones. 
Yeah, no, 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 not as not <laughs> no, not nearly like that. He's, he's not as he's not as manipulative too. and stuff, doing his own thing. But uh, rumor has like in the film, the first one, Jacob Roy pulling him aside and said, "Spoiler alert for Harry Potter, but you're a good guy. You loved Harry's mom. You looked after Harry. Like that's one of the things. Like you're actually looking after Harry. You're a good guy." And the rumor has like he knew the whole time, like because she just loved Alan Rickman as the role so much that. She really wanted him to like know exactly how to play the role, and that yeah. was like, you know, the best way to do it is to tell him, "You're a good guy. You're so not. You're not. You're not a douchebag that that wants to kill him because you're in love with his douchebag." Ultimately, you're yeah. gonna do this. Yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, back to this. Tim Roth just got the serum, so He's now super fast. Yeah. He's somehow like, they cornered him at the the college. Well, I think douchebag, uh, not douchebag, but generic boyfriend tipped him off. Yeah. That's right, and uh. So here's the the next Hulk out scene, which I think is really badass. You ever been in a, like a school library like this, like instead of like a public library, like a college like library? A, yeah, uh, no, I don't think I have. They're weird, man. Like it's just yeah. like this, where it's just like rows and rows of of metal things, and I don't know. I just I don't I don't like school libraries. Well, I, no, I, I suppose I have it in school, but not not like a large university like this, like yeah. Culver. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like Love Tyler. The more I see her in this movie, because I watch this movie a lot, actually, and I just don't like her. I think she sucks. Like, <laughs> right there, it looked like, no, looked like somebody was dying. Like, she was seeing somebody being murdered the way she screamed, right. Dad. <laughs> but she's just getting his attention. Well, there is a freaking tank rolling up on a university, so... Well, yeah, but she was just like, Dad, I know you're in there, then... Dad! <laughs> like this dire scream. But I love the scenery, like the the look of the buildings with the grass, and then the Hulk's there. Like, it's just really cool looking. Right. I love seeing the Hulk in, like, different atmospheres and settings and stuff. And they trap him in this building, or in this uh, bridge-enclosed thing. I mean, you might as well turn into the Hulk right now so you don't die. Well, then again, you don't want to kill people either, so... Yeah. Maybe you'd rather die? Yeah. I think it's crazy how, like, one of the deleted scenes, there was an alternate opening, is where he gets dropped off, like, over somewhere in the Arctic. And he's walking out into the into the snow, and somebody drops him off as far as they can take him. Mm. And he tries to kill himself. She takes out some military dude. Just right there, she freaking <laughs> backhanded him and knocks him out. But uh, she, he sees her get taken out, and it makes him so enraged. He's yeah, Hulk. yeah, that's what turns into the Hulk. Like him getting gas, like oh, oh well. But yeah, seeing her get tackled. get tackled, yeah, he's like, "Fuck that! I'm pissed. Don't touch Betty." Mm. I think the CG is good in this, but it's not super good. Like something about about it, I just don't like. About the CG? Yeah, the CG in this movie. Like, I don't like the way his skin looks. It looks like it's... I mean, you can absolutely tell it's CG. I mean, they have yeah. that point where... Well, there's no giant green monsters in reality, so you know it's CG <laughs> yeah. anyway, but... Yeah. But I don't know, like... It looks cool, but I don't know, like, his skin, like, it just looks too... It's weird looking. Yeah. It doesn't... It's not, like... Smooth or anything. Like, it's just really... It looks like people just made it out of clay and, like, never made it look smooth. I don't know. But uh, in Ang Lee's Hulk, we were saying like he he was so big, like he just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. So when they were making this movie, they decided uh, like eight foot six is how tall he's gonna be, or something like that. Like it's eight foot something. Right. And like that was his stand. Like when he's the Hulk, that's how big he is. He never gets any bigger or smaller, or his size doesn't depend on how angry he is. Like that's how big the Hulk is. And I thought that was really good. And then it really make him any stronger, or you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, Depending on he's just the Hulk. Yeah. Doesn't matter how big he is, but Well I mean normally like if he gets angrier he gets stronger and, and, and bigger, I guess, in the comics, right? I don't think no, I don't think he ever got bigger. He never like, gets bigger, he just gets more unstoppable somehow. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking badass thing and fucking just smash like this. <laughs> look at the cell phones of the time. People taking videos of this, like college kids. That was a nice touch. You know, it made it seem a little more real. Like, there's real people out there, you know, w witnessing this, college kids and stuff. Right. 
Yeah, here's Blonsky. Now he's stepping in. This is fucking badass right here where he's like jumping over the Hulk and stuff. I like how the Hulk's smart enough to like actually use shields and stuff like that even though he doesn't really have to. Yeah. But he does anyway. That's a cool shot right there. Like, it looks kind of like Edward Norton. His his grin looks kind of like him. His eyes a little bit. That's yeah, fucking yeah. badass. Wait, Blonsky's jumping around like an acrobat right here. Right. That's fucking sick. But he's just using hangar like... You just saw on, shit tons yeah. of machine guns mounted on fucking Hummers not do anything. Your little 9 millimeters going to do something? But he's still holding his own. But, but I mean, <laughs> what's really holding your own? What could you possibly do here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I like how fast he's running right here, though. They have him, like, on wires and stuff. To make yeah, I, did, I, I think I did see that in the special features. Yeah. Maybe not special. I think I might have watched like DVD on TV or something. They do on FX channel. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Because I do remember seeing that where they have them on wires and they, you know. Yeah, they're just dragging him. He just has to make the motions. Yeah. It's crazy that he's like, I think this is like from the comics or something. How this is how they stop him in, in something using like sonic blasts. It's kind of interesting. Like that's the way to stop the Hulk. But well, ultimately, it doesn't work. He just, <laughs> you know, walks right through it. It just seems to me, I don't know, the Hulks always seem kind of, I mean, sure, you could shoot him and, and, you know what I mean, that's not effective, but, like, like let's say you got, like, a white hot knife or something that could cut through his neck, like, it seems like he should be stoppable, you know, no matter how big. Yeah. I mean, when you're a god or something, you know, like Iron Man even, you know, you've got iron, you've got indestructible alloy, you know. Yeah, know. but I don't know, because I think, like, when they created Wolverine to fight the Hulk, and he has these adamantium uh, claws yeah. that couldn't cut through him. Like, I, I think, I, no, I think at best it gave him scratches. But yeah. I think the Hulk has a, a healing factor like Wolverine. Oh, okay. So, and his skin, like, he doesn't have just, like, human skin that's big and green. Like, it's, you know, it's gamma skin, so it it is almost invulnerable to things like adamantium blades and things, so... Mm. So I mean he is I mean that's why they they invented uh, Wolverine because the uh, the unstoppable force and the unbreakable object you know right. so this is why they just go face to face it's fucking badass Hulk <laughs> just kicks him in the chest yeah is that all you got nope how about this <laughs> he just goes boom oh it snapped every bone in your body yeah. Hold back, okay. <laughs> like, oh, our super soldier couldn't do it. Let's get out of here. Fuck okay. it. I'm not sure if it's a deleted scene. I think uh, they go to Betty's house and he's there, the generic boyfriend. And he's like, no wonder she hates you. Like, he's like, or he's like, now I know why does she hates you. Because mm. they, they ransack her house. Because she runs away with... Or Hulk abducts her, that's right. Like, well, it doesn't really abduct her, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're saying missiles now. I think this is, uh, this next scene where they're, like, in the cave in the rain. Right. It's from a comic book. But, like, there's so many different versions of the Hulk where he's, like, the mindless monster that can't really think or speak. Right. Then there's, like, Intelligent Hulk, then there's all these different, yeah, all these different types of Hulks. Caveman. (laughs) Yeah, but, uh, I think the one that lasted the longest in the comics was... You know, he could talk and everything. It's, he's not like the silent monster like he is in this and Ang Lee's Hulk where he doesn't really talk. He talks a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, but like he could hold a conversation, but it was more caveman-like. Right. Like the scene that's coming up. Well, like, kind of like in the Avengers, he's, he's kind of like that. He talks a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the puny human. Right. Yeah, he's. I think he's more intelligent in that than he is in this. Yeah. Well, talkative-wise, anyway. Like this, and you can, you can tell he's thinking and things like that. He's feeling emotions right now. Mostly anger, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, he has the, you know, like in the beginning, like leave me alone. Like he he can still think, like yeah. he just doesn't want to be bothered. But in the comic, like this next scene is coming up when they're in the at a cave or whatever. And um, but in the comics, like he has like a legit conversation still as the Hulk with her. But it's it's mine. He's like, Betty, do this and. I Hulk, I save you, like, I'm happy, like, and, <laughs> and stuff, but 
it is you know he's still talking like he's not this mute monster like right. they kind of portray him as if he you know in most adaptations yeah they kind of they drop the bomb that he tipped the military off so you're like oh right, what a douchebag you did everything calling us yeah, yeah then now he, he's like, yeah, he's like the wrong hell? thing it turns out you're an asshole I thought yeah. I was you know yeah I thought I was you know helping the military and Betty protecting from who from you you know yeah so it kind of redeems the character right I mean, he, I guess he was only jeopardized for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> he did the right thing calling us. Like, oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> and then the next moment, he's telling he's Thunderbolt off so, Ross. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I really wish they would have kept in those scenes in the house. They really developed his character a little bit more. And the relationship that he has with Betty and, and things. Yeah, this whole scene right here. Then there's, like, lots of speculations that... At one of these lightning crashes, he like screams, like, mm-hmm. he, like he goes, he, like he puts her down, and he's like, he gets mad at the at the lightning for like scaring him, mm-hmm. and like you see the lightning bolt, everyone's like, oh, that's Thor's hammer dropping down from when Odin says, you know, banishes Thor, mm-hmm. you know, he's when the lightning yeah, right here, he, like he bumps his head and gets pissed, and the lightning flashes, so it's uh, everyone's like, oh, that's Thor, it's like, well. I guess, but like that flash of lightning could have been Thor. Like, who's to say, you know, if it is or isn't? Or it could just be a flash of lightning. And yeah, exactly. Dumb. Yep. Do it trying to make associations anywhere they can. Yeah. Well, like I was saying, like there was a scene where, uh, yeah, right there, he gets pissed because it made him bump his head. Throws a rock. Like he could have <laughs> killed somebody with that rock. Yeah, like that lightning bolt there was supposed to be Thor because like you saw a lightning bolt flash and then something kind of falls. It looks like so. Everyone's like, "That's Thor's hammer and Thor's body." The whole thing, just reaching for straws. But yeah, I don't think they were thinking that far ahead. No, but they were thinking about Captain America because I, like, I keep trying to say the related scene that it was supposed to open the movie was him trying to kill himself in the Arctic. Uh huh. And like, you don't actually see him pull the trigger, but like, uh, he's like, or you hear it, but then like, then you see him like smash down as the Hulk. Like, so he didn't die. Obviously, he turns the Hulk, and uh, it goes over the ice, and you see Captain America vaguely through the ice. Oh, that's cool. And uh, and they kept with that, which is weird, the d- deleted scene. But in the Avengers, Bruce Banner talks about it. He says, "You know, like I tried to kill myself. You know, I I put a bullet in my mouth and pulled the trigger, but the yeah, other guy spit it out. You know, the other guy referred to the Hulk. So I mean, they're talking about a scene that was deleted from this movie. Huh? But it's like things like that is probably why Bruce or uh, Edward Norton dropped out because he's like." Everything that we worked on was fucking was trash. Pretty like, good. yeah, yeah like, that was like, this isn't quite a mindless action movie, but it is basically a mindless action movie. I mean, it's The Incredible Hulk. It can't be a still philosophical movie like Ang right. Lee's tried to be. Yeah. But, you know, like, Edward Norton, you know, whatever he was working on was probably much bigger and better and had more depth to it. And they kind yeah. of threw everything out the window to make two giant green monsters fight at the end. I'm not sure that was always the end. But. I would like to have seen had he put it all together what it would have what it would have looked like. Yeah, maybe not. Like I said, like not all the deleted scenes have to be in there, mm. but a lot of them was like it would have made the movie so much better, longer but better. Yeah. Like this, like every bone in his body is broken, but he's still he's recovering. The super serum, super yeah. soldier serum is kicking in. Oh, I was snuggled up to the Hulk, and now you're a human. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, how would she snuggle up to the Hulk? Like, he's this giant bear thing, and she can't get, get his, her arm around him. You think they have good chemistry on screen? In reality? No, like or on screen. In, like, on screen? You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she works in this movie. I don't hate her. No, like, I don't hate her in this movie. Like, I just don't like Liv Tyler in general, so I don't like... Right. She's not like, like, oh man, she was so good in this movie. But yeah, them together on screen, it's not bad. Like when they try to do like the comedy, like, I'm not sure if it works all that well. I just, I just don't like Liv Tyler. I think that's what it is. I just don't like her that much. Right. That was kind of a cool effect. The shower head turning into a machine, machine gun. Machine gun, yeah. Freaking him out. So little things like that, like giving him like almost like, uh, what is it, PTSD? 
Yeah, post marriage stress disorder, yeah. Yeah, so things like that. Like earlier like when he was sleeping, he had flashes of things and it woke him up all he was all scared and, yeah. and just now like little things like that, it's like it didn't happen in the movie, but it was it's a nice touch to be like he is a tortured soul and like these things that he's seen as the Hulk he still and sees. Does he remember? Is he yeah. all of it? Or yeah, exactly. Like, it's like those flashes. Like He is semi-conscious of what he is doing as the Hulk. Like He's still there. Yeah. It is you know, probably not completely. <laughs> he exactly. just yeah, shat yeah. that out. <laughs> I think they're saying he vomited because they had him vomiting prior to that. Yeah. It would be better if they just showed him or they made a sound effect of him deucing. <laughs> 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 Yeah, little things that they throw in there to make the the character come more to life and things like that. Right. <laughs> purple oh, pants. Here's the purple pants. Would look cool with the green skin. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious if she said that. Like, well, maybe you turn to the Hulk. It'd look good. You'll still be fashionable. <laughs> Culver University, yeah. You don't see a whole lot of people smoking and things anymore. Yeah, they uh, they cut that out, and when they do, it's a cigar or yeah. a cigarette. It used to be so glamorous, and yeah, now you're dirty. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, smoking's bad. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, anytime I say anything is bad, I always think okay. about that. Do you like Hulk with longer hair or like shorter hair? Longer. I think I like the longer. Yeah, I like In fact, like, like the, with the gray one or whatever, there's there's different variations, obviously, of Hulk, but there's one where it's like the, the medieval, like he's got a sword and shit, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I think right. that's uh, Scar. That's Son of Hulk. Oh, okay. Where he's got really, really long hair. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's kind of cool, but, it, I mean, you know, mid-length or whatever, I think it's yeah, cooler than yeah, short. Th- yeah. Like, yeah, he's all, you know, his hair is kept nice and, you know, uh, that that's less realistic, I think. Yeah, I think... Well, not that Hulk is freaking realistic, but I mean, <laughs> you know, if you're to turn into this giant monster, I mean, for it to be like... Then again, if you're human and your hair, I don't know if the hair would change, but I guess... Yeah, I think they try to do it, like, whatever Banner's hair is, Hulk's hair is. Hair is, is yeah. But I would... I would like... I like a Hulk with, like, longer Yeah, hair. the look of a Hulk, I think it yeah. looks cooler when his hair is longer, not all nicely. Yeah, but that would mean Banner would have to have longer hair. Uh, they do it a few times, like in the Marvel animated movies, where he's got a little bit longer hair. And I like that. Like my uh, my background on my computer right now is the Incredible Hulk in anticipation for us doing this. How and, frustrating would this be right here? I love seeing this. Like I can't, because I'm gonna turn into a giant monster. And crush <laughs> yeah, it. Oh, no sex for me. That would be the worst. Yeah, dude. that would definitely suck. Yeah, that's sick right there. Where it's like the kind of like a bowl cut almost the Hulk hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's like old school style hair. Yeah. Where it's like um, it's kind of, kind of hard to explain. Almost like almost like a Three Stooges type haircut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's his name? Is it uh, Larry? Larry. Yeah. Ah, uh, that would be so frustrating. To have Larry hair. Well, that too. <laughs> no, no. The the sex. Yeah, that would be very. Very frustrating. No sex, especially with the woman that you love, yeah. you haven't seen in so long. Like making out all intense. Like, yeah. this is gonna be some good ass sex right here. Oh, never mm. mind. <laughs> Up, full recovery. <sighs> Blonsky. I think Blonsky's a, a character from the the, car, uh, the comics. I don't know anything about him. Blonsky yeah, character. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure he is in the comics, but I don't know too much about him. I know in recent years, anyway, I don't know, it could have been 10 years that it started, I don't know. But uh, the family of Hulk, like, there's all kinds of Hulks now. Like, they, like the like Agents of Smash, yeah. yeah. But yeah. The, the Red Hulk is Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah. He ends up using the, the serum. serum on himself to stop the Hulk and he becomes the Hulk. Right. But he's supposed to be stronger as well. Mm. It's crazy. I think Betty turns into to a red She-Hulk. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, this like the comedy. I'm not sure it works just because of her. You did that, right? 
Yeah, oh yeah. No, yeah I mean, I'm not saying like she's unattractive or anything. I was not like her as an actress very much. Yeah, that's well, kind of a silly question. Is this the scene right? where she's like, we can sell my necklace. No, you can't do that. Yeah, you can't do it anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need to say, like, I promise we'll get it back from the pawn shop. Something like that, yeah. (laughs) I I think they should have found a way to cut that out. I mean, that's not necessary, you know. Make him look like a freaking clucker, you know. (laughs) These plugs into, like, any computer. Are they, like, renting a car or something right now? Or trying to buy a car? Yeah, I think they buy a truck. Yeah. I think and then they end up walking like halfway anyway. Scene. Yeah. But right before that, there's a scene where the the colonel or whatever says, uh, "We're we know about the Mister Green and Mister Blue now, so anytime you know we're, we're looking out for that." And that's where. Now there's Shield. He's hacking the Shield. It's so cool that Marvel created a, a movie universe. Yeah. That's so badass. Fucking mind blowing, dude. We're gonna make all these individual movies. They're all gonna tie together. We'll make team movies and just keep adding characters and movies into this universe. Like, yeah, just nuts, man. Yeah, I bought some shitty truck. Don't they have to like leave it behind on a bridge? Yeah, I think it's like the next scene. It's like they don't have the truck anymore now. Or (laughs) yeah, like because of the. Military is either watching the bridges because they know where. Uh, oh, Mr. that's Blue right. Is. That's right. Yeah, they get out and walk away. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, I'm gonna watch this movie the less I like her. <laughs> what happens? What do you experience? I mean, she looks the part. You know, brunette, pretty. Right, with glasses, especially. Yeah. Do you remember anything? Yeah, I don't like her. Yeah. Something that I'll think like, who else could play her? There's, you um, know, like you said, like any brunette, basically. Right. I, I guess she was kind of a good choice. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Jennifer Connelly. I mean, girl. but I mean, oh three Jennifer Connelly because like now you know that's she's thirteen years probably ago. Probably too old to. Yeah. Now. Have you seen her in anything recently? I haven't. No. Like Patricia Arquette couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, I guess they could just get anybody, really. Any new new girl and an up-and-coming actress, you know? But yeah, I mean, right I there, the where he's all case, skinny yeah, and stuff. He's, well, now he's more ripped. I think we might have missed the scene, because I think it was earlier where he looks no, kind of... That, no, because that's always, where he looks sickly. Like, he, he's more toned. Like, you can see the muscles. Right. But it looks all sickly and skinny, yeah. Yeah. It's not as, uh... healthy looking. Yeah, the tolls... Or no, they yeah, military's out or police are searching. They just leave the car in the middle of the street. Like the people yeah. behind them would be so fucking pissed off. I know. I was in traffic like that earlier. It's frustrating. If that had happened, uh, I would I would follow them. <laughs> <laughs> you got on a boat? Is that what's happening right here? Yep. Oh uh, yeah. Drop me crumbs. That's a good idea. <coughs> New York City. New York City. I like how Marvel didn't just like throw this movie, uh, you know, on the wayside after Edward Norton left, and it kind of was apparent, like, oh, you know, how are we gonna fit this into the the Marvel thing if you know he's not around or anything? Yeah. And they, uh, they, but they still mention it, like they mentioned de- the deleted scene. Mm. And then, uh... Well, I mean, he's just a character in the movie, you know? Yeah, but, um... And then he says, like, last time I was in New York, I I flattened the Bronx or whatever. Mm. And referring to the the final fight in this movie, where they're in Brooklyn or the Bronx or wherever they are. Right. (laughs) I have some techniques that could really help you. Yeah, a few techniques that could help you. (laughs) Yeah, he's like, whoa, you're really angry. (laughs) Zip Okay, and right before they got in that in the in the, in the crazy Real cab, quick, that entire scene could have been deleted. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Been. That's one that I guess like the humor didn't quite work. 
because uh, right before they get into the crazy cab, mm. like, let's take the subway. It's like me in a small metal tube in the most aggressive city in the world, the world yeah. underground. Like, not, not a good idea. idea. Yeah, let's take a cab. And the cab <laughs> ended up being crazy. Even worse. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, to be underground would be the worst part. Yeah. No escape. Although, not really. You're underground. You're not out in the city. Yeah, but anybody that, you know, that whole, whole subway car is going to die. Yeah. At least in the, in the city, like, if you hulk out, smash maybe a few things, you can just jump away. Right. You know, because obviously, we like, we've established the whole can think, like, leave me alone, I just want to get away. He doesn't want to hurt random people. Yeah. But in a subway, when he f- initially hulks out, he is just kind of smashing around. Yeah. The, the, the train I mean, if he was just rail. randomly killing things, then he wouldn't be the Hulk. He would <laughs> yeah. be a superhero. Yeah. yeah. But, like, his initial Hulk out, when he does just freak out, like, he'd probably smash some things, the, the train would derail, right. everyone would die. So, it is, a, it is much more dangerous, even if he is a calm, cool, and collected, like, rational Hulk, mm. he'd still smash things and things would go wrong and die, or things, people would die. Right. I had, like, uh, I forget this actor's name. He's in, like... But him as the nerdy guy? Yeah. Again, it could have been anybody. I mean, in this case, just an ugly person. <laughs> 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 But, I mean, you could put a glasses on anybody, and it could be a doctor that's... You know what I mean? It didn't necessarily have to be somebody goofy-looking, yeah. Yeah. But, uh... But they, they allude to him being the he leader. The part. I, I feel like this part was earlier in the movie, but... Oh, this part? Okay. But look at how sickly he looks, yeah. yeah. Like, his, his, he's suddenly out of shape, but somehow stronger. Yeah. Like, his hair would <laughs> look... like his chest? Yeah, oh yeah, he does. Yeah, he looks... Yeah. Really thin and sickly. Well, so the thing's probably like eating away at his muscles and, th- and his bones and stuff. Yeah. But they inject it into his bones, so it's probably right there you go off, you see it growing in his bones. But then, like, his muscles are probably deteriorating. But I don't know. He's obviously like a monster. I love that line. He just looks so evil, too. Like a monster. That's cool. But yeah, this guy, like, he, like, uh... When Blonsky gets the second serum later, mm. he knocks this guy down, and like, he gets a cut on his head, and then the serum falls into the cut, and you can see his head, like, growing and, like, bulging. Mm. And it's supposed to be, like, that's the leader. Like, one of the Hulk's bad guys from the comics, where he's, like, a gamma guy, but, it's, like, the gamma was all in his brains. He has this huge brain. He's, like, super yeah, smart. Yeah, I remember that, that's, that's, that's the story of it that's how it happens I'm not sure if that's how exactly that happens in the comics but obviously that's what they were gonna do if they ever made a sequel with the leader it would be this guy and that's how it would have happened oh that's cool so it's cool that like even in this like they were thinking ahead like oh he he plays kind of like a traitor like we'll see in a moment but yeah like he doesn't care about Bruce Banner he cares about science and all that stuff so right And obviously, it doesn't take a lot of persuasion for him to do the same thing to, what's his name? Blonsky. Blonsky. Yeah, yeah exactly. He, in fact, he kind of wants to do He's like, yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he's getting pretty cool or whatever. <laughs> yep. This, this scene right here, like, where he's, like, going from, like, Hulk to human, mm. always reminded me of the beginning of... Hollow Man with Kevin Bacon back in like 2001 oh, or 2000 remember. I think I did watch it but man we're, we're talking <laughs> yeah, 15 years yeah. yeah but uh they had an ape strapped up like this and they were experimenting on him to, to make him invisible mm. so you'd see it like go from like an ape to like a skinless ape to like where you just see the ape's veins mm. you know like and then it kind of goes back to a regular ape like it didn't work right <clears throat> and that's what this always reminded me of like him going from human to Hulk and then back to human, like. The CG is just pretty terrible. And these leather straps hold him down. <laughs> I know. Oh, never mind. He does break it. They, they held him for quite a long time. Yeah. That's kind of cool. The whole thing bends under the pressure of the Hulk. 
I've always liked the idea that like Betty was like the only thing that could calm him down. Right. In the uh, Marvel animated Ultimate Avengers movie, that's kind of what happens. Like Betty has like step in front of him to stop him from <laughs> killing all the Avengers, for him to calm down and turn back into to Bruce. Well, to to calm him down enough to where like tranquilizers would work on him. Right. Pants never seen a rip completely off. <laughs> yeah, but well, in Ang yeah, Lee's we can't show his penis. So. In Ang Lee's Hulk, his pants did come, come complete off, completely off oh. when he was fighting the the hulked out dogs in the redwood forest, which is just super retarded. I but when he like when he, he comes back, it, but he comes back and yeah, he's standing in front of Betty, he's completely naked. That makes more sense, though, you know? Well, yeah, absolutely. Especially in that movie where he becomes 18 a feet tall and monster, shit, yeah. so... Well, shit, did you, yeah. That, that building-sized monster. Yeah. Because, like, like, so right now he's basically cured, as far as they know. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's like, what? That was fucking awesome! Yeah. Like, yeah, you turned into a giant green fucking monster. Yeah. <laughs> he is so nerding out right now. It's awesome. But imagine how cool that would be to see that, you know? Yeah. Like, in real, <laughs> in real life, to see somebody turn into a giant freaking green monster. Yeah. My God. But for him to have been helping him this whole time, wouldn't he have had to have some inclination? You know what I mean? Like... Or, you know, so some idea that that's what's really... Ha- I mean, why would you be this excited and this helpful, you know what I mean, if you didn't have some idea that that was what was happening, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll keep corresponding with you and creating all these... In a moment, they show this room where he's got all these blood samples and stuff. Like, if you didn't know that was what happened, then why would you have all this research and, and time dedicated to this? No, I think earlier... Maybe he just thought he gets strong. No, earlier, because uh, the whole time they're corresponding, he just... They were talking about, like, hey, we're both super scientists, but I need an outside opinion, and I can't go to Betty, because, you know, obviously the military is always watching her, so he goes to Mr. Blue, and, uh, you know, how can you help with gamma radiation? So they keep helping, like, the, you know, find this flower, maybe that'll work, and mm-hmm. it didn't, and he, Mr. Blue keep, kept asking him, like, send me a blood sample, well, like, send me right a blood here. sample. He's like, this is all you, this, this is all your gamma Yeah, yeah, well, because, like, earlier, he keeps saying, like, no, I can't send his blood sample, and I think eventually he does. I mean, he he did yeah. send Mr. Blue a blood sample, so based on that blood sample, he made all this shit. But that's what I'm saying. Like, if he didn't know he turned into this jet, like... Yeah. When he was starting to turn, it's like, okay, I'm ready to turn it off. It's like, no, there's more. It's like, if you didn't know that that was what he was capable of, then why would you really dedicate... I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It does seem kind of weird that, you know, you have his blood, you have all this shit based on his blood that you did... And you didn't know anything about it, right? Other than gamma radiation, like yeah. But again, it's a movie. It's just yeah, means to an end. This part's cool. The way he yeah, just yeah. jumps up the rail. <laughs> yep. He's like fuck, running up all these stairs. And you realize that he called the the military. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think he called the government. I think they just found him because they knew he was corresponding to Mr. Green. You know, oh, Mr. Blue, yeah, yeah, where, okay. where we're going to meet. That's right. <laughs> Plus, is just so crazy. He just wants to fight the Hulk again. So disappointed. I like the flash of white right there because. I don't know if you've ever been hit in the face, but you do see that flash of white you know I'm talking about. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been hit in the face. I've been hit in the face many times. 
If you get one of those faces, people like to punch it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was... There's a blip sound, too. I was like, boop! It's hard to explain when you get hit. Here speaks to me as your daughter again, just professional, in professional <laughs> yeah. capacity. Well, I mean, I guess if they ever did have to have something like this going on. Yeah, like some kind of professional correspondence, then yeah. she would be okay with it. Yeah, see, now he's all, like, for it. Yeah. She's an annoying bitch. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. What could I have possibly done to deserve this treatment? I like this right here. Yeah, he's like, all right, I'm, uh, I'm interested. Yeah, he's like, you got a little something in you already. Yeah. I want more. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Godlike. Yeah, it is quite godlike. Mm. Catastrophic. An abomination. Yeah. A name drop. Yeah. A lot of the times in these movies, like, you don't actually call the character whatever he is in the comics, so they kind of yeah. somewhere Can't mention it. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I liked about the Spider-Man movies. Like, they straight up call their villains those villains, like Doc Ock. Like, yeah. You know, they call him Doc Ock, Doctor Octopus. Right. And this, like, it's just a name drop. Like, it would be an abomination. They're not calling him the abomination. He just is some form of human abomination. Oh, playing footsies. Footsies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to prison for the rest of my life, but I'm so happy. <laughs> Yeah, they, they took me out of my, you know, restraints. I'm just sitting here. Well, he's got little restraints, rather, but... I mean, when they take precautions, like, we can't have him on a helicopter with all these high-ranking yeah. people. If he <laughs> turns into the Hulk, we're all dead, you know? Yeah, especially, like, cause they don't know that he just got it taken out of him or if it yeah. actually worked. Right. If they do know that... They know for didn't... certain he can turn into a giant green monster. Yeah, like, let's just be tiny little shackles. He's totally awake. <laughs> you know, you know, helicopter with everybody, like... Yeah. And this could make him super kissy, angry. Kissy, yeah. It totally heavily sedate him and all that stuff. I like the look of this. Yeah, right here where the blood sample goes into his cut on his head. Oh, brain starting to bubble and smiles a little bit. Like, yay. Hmm. Yeah, the abomination. I like how he he looks. Yeah, because like in the sick. comics, he's like fish. Like he's got these like huge ears. Yeah, yeah. And I never liked it. Yeah, I agree. He looks way fucking cooler like this with no yeah. ears, or whatever type of ears he does have. The giant spine. I think that's cool. They like, watch like the extensive special features. You learn like. The differences in, in the walks of the Hulk, like Hulk's like upright and like walks like a human, and he's like ape-like. Uh, yeah, more ape-like, but he walks like leaning forward as he walks, with his hands almost like behind him as he's walking. Like, yeah. Like if you notice, it's like when they're like running at each other, you can look at it. But it's just cool, like you know, they actually did try to make them as different as possible, not just yeah. two giant green people fighting each other. <laughs> You can totally throw in, like, different movie taglines and stuff. Like, you know, I guess Jaws would be bigger boat. Uh, I think it was Godzilla. Like, we need bigger guns! <laughs> you can totally have that in, right, in the scene right here. Do they have that in this movie? I don't know. Probably. I don't think not. Probably not, I was going to say. 
It's like, what's the point of this? You're just sacrificing these people's lives, knowing that they cannot do any freaking damage, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's like, how many times have you tried... Hummer that just got taken out by a car, you know? And how many times have you tried and failed to take out the Hulk? And now yeah. it's, like, in a popular New York City... Let's just block the road up with this giant Hummer and, uh... Yeah. You know, put their lives at risk while we're at it. He looks at Banner. What should we do? <laughs> He's getting no ears. Yeah. The opposite. Couldn't remember. I was trying to think. Did they give him ears? Yeah. I was pretty sure that they had no ears. <laughs> One of yours. Well, these regular cops wouldn't know anything about the Hulk. Yeah, I was talking more about the army. Like, yeah. assuming he was... Or assuming he was... Requested. That's the they biggest gun you've got? Sweet. sweet. <laughs> like you've never seen it before? <laughs> like, sweet. I didn't sweet. know this There's was a there. bazooka in this thing I've been sitting on all night. That's a cool effect right there. Yeah. I forget how tall they made him. Because if Hulk was 8 foot 6, he's like 10 foot something, I think. Yeah. Something like that, because like, he is much bigger than the Hulk. Right. Damn, they're smashing up through everything. I think it was filmed in Canada. Uh huh. Yeah. They just made the street look like the Bronx or wherever yeah. they are, Brooklyn or whatever. Harlem. I think it's Harlem, maybe. Oh, I've been to Harlem, dude. Harlem, I remember thinking, like, oh, my God, this is, like, I'm from a ghetto, and it just looked so, it was so gross. <laughs> Harlem is freaking ghetto. Yeah, I've never been in New York City, so I wouldn't know. No, oh, headed for Harlem. Harlem, yeah. So without knowing whether you can still even turn to the Hulk, I'm yeah. gonna jump out of this plane. I hope for the best. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I'll just be dead, but at least he tried. I mean, that's what that was, that's what makes Bruce Banner the hero. Yeah, it's like I'm going <clears throat> going to choose to try to turn on the Hulk to try to stop this other monster. And if I don't, I'm at least trying. Like I'm not just gonna be like, well, well it's your guy's fault. I'm not the Hulk anymore. Mm. You know. So him as Bruce Banner <clears throat> is trying, you know, to help and save the day. Not yeah, like you said, like not even knowing if he can, so he's taking a huge gamble. <laughs> One last kiss. Yeah, what, what better way to raise your heart beat than, or your heart rate than just, <laughs> yeah. you know, feeling nothing beneath your feet, you know? Yeah. You think they have green eyes? Huh? Oh, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but he lands and he doesn't die. The realization you're not turning a hook probably really raise your heart rate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That's awesome. There it is. The Hulk's so fucking cool. I think he does things like this in the comics where he uses like cars as like boxing Shield gloves yeah, and boxing stuff. Gloves, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure he does that. The way he's like so shredded, there's yeah. the lean muscle or whatever, you know, yeah. the, the I mean, it's crazy that like the end of this movie is just a giant CG monster battle. Yeah. But it's so fucking badass. 
Because the CG is quite good, where you can be like, yeah, hit him, you know? Yeah. It's not just like, oh my god, it's so bad, I can't even watch. So it's, it's, it's definitely uh, bearable. You can actually enjoy it. Right. The CG is good enough. And it's the shots like that, where he's in the fire, that looks fucking real. Or, yeah. you know, at least really, really good. Yeah, he rips a car in half. Like, wouldn't he? The amount of time it takes him, he was like, he was like seven human paces away. <laughs> yeah. What a cool idea! <laughs> I'm gonna hit you with these cars. Yeah. What is he grabbing onto though? The car seats? No, I don't know. Just, <laughs> just probably all, a whole fistful of things smushed together yeah. in his fist. Huh, you said that before. <laughs> you, no, I you, kick you yep. way freaking further. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's so evil looking. It's yeah. awesome. Well, what color is the other one? Yeah. Kind of Sickly green color? Green. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what color that is. Yellowish? Uh, Pus color? Yeah, like yellowish, greenish, gray. I've always said, like, when I watch movies like this, like Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier, mm. I really, really like that movie. I like it because, like, not a whole lot of it is CG. Like, it seems, you know, it's almost more like a, just a, like a, an action movie they could have made in the 90s, you know, guns on the street, like, you know, mm -hmm. and explosions, like, that's it. Like, it's nothing too crazy. Right. And then the end, giant CG ships that can destroy the world, and there's explosions everywhere, and CG flying ships and bullets everywhere. Right. And those are the kind of things where it's like, it's like, oh, I love the movie up until the end where it just became CG. CG, right. And, like, <laughs> this movie, like, it's all CG. Like, that helicopter is CG. The two main characters that are fighting are CG. Like, everything is CG. Right. And yet I can still enjoy this more than I can enjoy something like giant helicarriers and Falcon flying around. Right. I don't know. Like, maybe because I just like the Hulk more than I like Captain America. I like the Captain America Winter Soldier I movie. Well, I, I think the, of the Avengers, at least the Captain America is definitely my least favorite. Like yeah, Captain absolutely. America, yeah. I have a shield and I'm a super, you know, whatever. Yeah. I've always stated that after the, that movie, the, the first one, uh, the first Avenger, yeah. that made me like Captain America a lot more than I always have. Then Avengers, like, oh yeah, he is still cool, even in this movie, with a different director, and different, you know, he's not the main character. Yeah. You know, it's an ensemble. So the, he, the movies, him in the movies made me like the character more, but I'm still not, still not going to want to read his comic books. Right. Oh, yeah, definitely not. Maybe The Winter Soldier, just to see what the actual story is. Not what, right. The movie's probably completely fucking different. Yeah. So just to see what actually happens. I'm, I, that, you know, that interests me, but just to be like, oh, I'm going to see what Captain America's up to this week. Like, right. like fuck. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um Except the first movie didn't do anything to enhance him for me. In fact, oh, I really? think maybe it made me like him worse. I didn't care for the first movie at all. Which yeah, we'll I th be watching yeah. and talking through in a couple weeks, probably. <laughs> yeah, because next is Iron Man 2, and then Thor, and then Captain America the last before the Avengers. But yeah. But as of right now, because like I said, like maybe watching these, doing these commentaries will make me change the order of which I like them as of now. Because yeah. right now, like, I know which ones I like the most and everything in phase one. Like, I know my favorite one is, you know, this certain one. My least favorite is that one. And so maybe rewatching them, I'll start to like one of them more or dislike one of them more. Yeah. But as of right now, Captain America is at the bottom. Right. Maybe I, I Iron Man 2. I think he'll probably remain there. Maybe Iron Man 2. No, that, I like Iron the, Man 3 least of all well, the Well, no, I'm saying phase one. Because Iron Man oh. 1 and 2 are both in phase one. Oh, okay. So the Phase 1 movies, it's either Captain America or Iron Man 2 right now at the bottom. I, I like the way that happens right there. It reminds me of Doomsday. But that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, his elbow can cut him, but not a bullet? Like, Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he does remind me a lot of Doomsday. Uh, yeah. Blonsky as, as Abomination. 
Doze is such a freaking cool character, by the way. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Because uh, in comic books, like, there's not just one Superman comic book, there's not just one Batman comic book, there's always like five or six involving him as the main character right. going mm-hmm. at the same time. So in the late 80s, early 90s, they kept thinking, like, what can we do to, you know, to help Superman and everything? And they said, we're going to kill him off. So, you know, they had, like, Superman, they had Avengers of Superman, they had Man of Steel, they had this comic, they had, you know, all these different titles. All at the same time, they slowly started dwindling them down to just Superman. Right. And, like, at the end of a lot of the, the books, it would just be, like, a cave like with, like, wall pounding. Like, that was, like, the last frame. Yeah. Or a uh, panel. Because <laughs> Doomsday is just in the earth, pounding his way out. Mm-hmm. And then he gets out and he kills Superman. Like, yeah. that's it. There's no back... I think later in the 90s they came up with some weird backstory for him. But at the time, it was just, oh, this monster came out of the earth and now he's killing... Or he's beating everybody up so Superman has to stop him. Like, Thank that you. was his backstory. Was He came out of the earth and now yeah. he's here. And so it was, it was really like they just set it up to where... Oh, Hulk. Smash. Yeah, that was Lou Ferrigno right there. Oh, uh, cool. It's weird, like, this is always weird, like, he, he lets go and it kind of just tangles <laughs> him up. One of the whole the way he chokes him. Yeah. What I was saying, like, you know, they just kind of made Doomsday just to kill Superman, like, right. that was his only purpose in the comics was, you're going to come out of the Earth, kill Superman, and you're going to throw him out into space, and, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. But it was so badass at the time, I loved it. I know. But you're right, Abomination in this movie looks a lot like him. Big, giant, spiky. Spiky, yeah. But yeah, you're right, his, his spikes could cut Hulk's face a little bit, but you, you, you can see the cuts aren't there anymore because he has the healing factor. Yeah. The Wolverine's blades can, can barely cut him. No, there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's right there. It was on his face, it was his chest, huh? Yeah. That's right. Pectoral. Yeah. But it won't be there next time you see the. And this part, like, yeah, he just gives up. He's still breathing, but he's just, he's just limp. You know. Yeah, like, yeah. He doesn't kill him. He moves over. Yeah, he kind of tries to get up a little bit. It's like, what did he do just right there? Did he snap his neck? No, he uh, doesn't actually kill him. But like, Hulk just kind of like weirdly like twitched. He's like stepped on him and just kind of crunched him down a little bit, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all these people standing around they would have fucking ran the other fucking way I would probably check it out I don't know yeah oh dude fuck that if I see things shit like that I'd like, you know, <laughs> get the fuck out of there we ever watch the uh, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Hero cartoon yeah I haven't finished it yet but with all the the crazy different prisons for supervillains Mm. Like you gotta think like something like that exists in their movie universe because what the fuck do they do with the abomination yeah you know they have to put him in some kind of crazy prison didn't yeah, Ant-Man come up with one where uh, I don't know yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think he ever does yeah. does he he's just stuck that way I guess yeah I guess they cut him up in a little tiny piece and <laughs> I don't know <laughs> no they probably wouldn't kill him but uh, doesn't Ant-Man in that cartoon show like make like a a little tiny prison and like he shrinks everybody down to be in this little prison perhaps yeah or I started, I started, I, well I haven't watched all of it through or anything I've seen episodes here and there oh uh, cause I started it but uh I haven't gotten around to finishing it it was a while ago that I started it that looks pretty cool with the, the light on him on his back and the green blood yeah You know, it keeps up for a little bit, then it gets, like, less and less on him, and then... Yeah, they're like, where'd he go? You just assume he loses them. Well, he loses them. <laughs> yeah. New York skyline. A lot of fucking buildings, man. Yeah. It's crazy that Godzilla could get lost in those buildings. <laughs> in the 1998 shitty one. Yeah. They lose him all the time. Like, where'd he go? <laughs> like, what the fuck do you mean, where'd he go? Where does he end up at the end of this movie? Is up in Canada? Yep, British yep. Columbia, BC. Yeah. 
Like, yeah. at, the, at the end of this, like they kind of allude to him being able to control it. Yeah. You know, that he wanted to turn into the Hulk at the end right. of this. Right, yeah, he's trying to. And he smiles about it, like he... Right. Like, yeah, I can control it now. And, and in the Avengers, he kind of does, you know? Yeah. They, I don't think they, they ever explain it in the Avengers, because like, the first time he hulks out, you know, he fights Thor, and he's, you know, he's enraged, and he tries to kill Black Widow and stuff, you know? Mm. And then later, when he turns into the Hulk, he's a good guy. He's just a part of the necklace. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um... So I think in the commentary, Joss Whedon explains when he unwillingly turns into the Hulk is when he's the mindless rage monster. When he yeah. willingly turns into the Hulk is when he can be the superhero Hulk yeah. and think and stuff like that. So, well, that's cool. You didn't really explain that in the movie, but... It makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. He has filled with rage. I mean, just like, yeah, as a human being, I get filled with rage and I'm uh, pissed off. And he's uh, he's like 31 days since the last time he up. Green eyes, zero. zero. He, he smiles. smiles yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, there should have been credits and then the scene. They just hear reload. Yeah. Up oh, drinking a green drink. Green, yeah. It's pretty ironic. What is there that's green? Um, uh, Midori's green. Midori, yeah. Seems kind of a, a little too girly, though, you know? Yeah. When this happened, this was more mind blowing than. Nick Fury talking about the Avengers. Yeah. Because it's like, it's like that, it's like that could have been its own thing, just Iron Man and whatever the, else they could do with an Iron Man movie. Mm. But for Robert Downey Jr. to join this movie, so you actually get two separate characters in two separate movies joining together, it's fucking mind blowing, dude. Yeah. Too shame. Well, it's not what it's too shame. Shut up, you know? You should talk. You should listen. <laughs> I was like, why is he going to Ross about the team? Like, this never really comes into play ever. In talking as, like, equals, like, shouldn't you be like, screw you, you know, I don't know. You kind of learn to hate that guy in this movie, and then, like, he's talking with Iron Man like they're buddies or whatever. But Yeah, and it's like, why didn't Nick Fury go to General Ross about right, the team? Right, why, yeah. And, Maybe you know, and, yeah, it, and at this point, like, you don't really, Tony doesn't know anything about the team. Yeah. Why is he recruiting people for the team? Right, for sure. Because in, in Iron Man 2, like, they don't even want him on the team anymore. Right. Because he just goes crazy because he knows he's dying and, and stuff like that. I'm but. sure mostly because Robert Downey Jr. agreed to do it. They yeah. just wanted to throw him in there and, and <laughs> yep. build it. But Yeah, um, overall, I really love the first half of this movie. Up until uh, the first time, or the second time he hooks out at uh, Culver. Mm-hmm. Then it kind of, like, when they go to New York, it's just like, oh, no, it's just kind of whatever. I think that's when the movie kind of gets interesting. And the yeah. final battle is pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy that. Overall, the- I, I feel like I can't rate it lower than, what was the, the, the draft, so. The giraffe? Which I get, draft, which I get. Oh, no, draft day? Maybe uh, I should have given that a 5.5, because I, I would give this... A six or six point five, I guess. Yeah, I think I gave Draft Day a six point five, and I'll probably give this a seven because I love the first half so much. I love where he's on the run, he's just kind of trying to solve the problem, and then the military's after him. He hulks out, but he's still trying to solve the problem, and like I just love that whole first half of the movie. I think it's just like even if he wasn't the Hulk, if he was just like some like former CIA specialist killer that they're after mm. like in any spy movie like it could have just been like a spy movie instead of him turning the Hulk he just all of a sudden you know, clicks starts killing people yeah. you know like he doesn't want to almost like uh, Liam Neeson you yeah, know like taken. yeah so that's why I like the first half so much is that it, it's not necessarily it's about the Hulk it's just like that whole half of the movie the conundrum yeah it seems just like so much more well done as a movie and not a superhero monster I CG movie. Be, yeah. like, so that's why I like yeah. the first half so much. The second half, just it just becomes more of a superhero movie than the first half was. I mean, I think a lot of that probably, for you, I think you're more of a Hulk fan in general oh, yeah. than I am too. Yeah, so way more. I think he's cool. There's parts of it I love, parts of it I, I, I wouldn't say hate, but... 
don't love so much, but uh, the movie itself, I think they did good with, you know, creating a story, and the CG, the story itself, uh, yeah, I think it was uh, 6.5, I'll give it. Yeah, I'll probably give it a 7, because it's really not the best superhero movie. Yeah, there's, uh, there's other movies that draw you in so much better. And, oh, yeah. But I still enjoy it, like, when I'm in the mood to watch a superhero movie, and I'm like, all right, you know, I have all of them made, basically, uh, you know, the cartoon is us, I'm like, what am I in the mood for? This is one I can always grab and watch, because I love the Hulk so much, and like I said, the first half, I really enjoy a lot, so I can pop this in, I'd probably pop this in more than most superhero movies. This and probably The Dark Knight are the oh, two yeah. that well, I watch the most. Those are a little bit different, but, uh, yeah. yeah. It was weird, because I like Batman Begins more than The Dark Knight. Yeah. But I watch The Dark Knight more because of the Joker. Right. You know? Yeah. So, because I... For me, Batman Begins, it was like untapped territory. With the Ra's al Ghul and everything. And the Scarecrow. Right. And kind of the origins of how he became a ninja. ninja. Like, yeah. Or, you know, just able to fight crime as well as he does and things right. like that. Because like, we'd never seen anything like that before in the movies. It was always... Like, oh, he's no, already he's, 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 he's already Batman, Batman and, and now he's fighting, fighting whoever he's fighting. Like, right. so for for them to do that, like, sure we'd seen the the death scene before right. in uh, Batman Nine, Batman but original. but they went so much further with it, like him going to China and learning how to fight and all that stuff. He was in prison. Mm. Uh, he he became a criminal to learn what it was like to live like them and how they think and operate. Mm. He went to, to prison. He learned how to fight and take care of himself and all that stuff. So like all that was like. You've never seen it before. It was like untold in movies and stuff. So, and the Scarecrow had never been seen. Rachel Ghoul never been seen. Maybe so for me, it was just like that was so cool. And like the way he becomes Batman, like him buying uh, the things from overseas and in bulk for the mask and all that stuff. Like right. he didn't just like oh I bought my Batman suit or whatever. He had he, the way he put it all together was just really really cool. And then the Dark Knight was just another Batman story. Right. But it's just so fucking badass. The Joker is so cool yeah. that I watch it more than Batman Begins because of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Um, I mean, those ones... You know what? That's that's just another day we'll, we'll get to Batman yeah, stuff. But. Yeah, we will. We'll definitely do the Batman movies. Maybe we'll do all the Batman movies. All I seven of them. I think we should. Well, that's a huge undertaking, but yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> Yeah, they want yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe maybe not even do commentaries for all seven, but some form of review or whatever. Mm. But yeah, yeah, review maybe. Might as well do a kind. Of, we'll we'll see. We'll cross the bridge when we get there. But for yeah. now, we're doing the Marvel stuff. So. Yeah, the phase one first, and then phase two. Yeah. Hopefully, we can get them all done before phase three starts. I'm sure. Yeah, and I mean, it comes out in like two months. Oh. Well, so probably we got a lot of, not. Yeah, we got a lot of movies to watch, but... Well, we'd probably have to wait for it to be in DVD anyway, so... Well, for that one, I'm saying, like, before Avengers 2 comes out in theaters, I would, I wanted to have up through that... Finished. Yeah, phase one, phase two, up to the upcoming movie. Well, we'll keep... We'll keep uh, <coughs> yeah, so I was like, we might start doing... Sure, not. Yeah, a little faster. More frequency, yeah. I haven't even uploaded uh, the last one yet. As of right now, that you're listening to this one, I haven't uploaded Iron Man yet. Um, or have I? No, no, I uploaded Iron Man. It was the other thing that we did. I haven't uploaded yet. Yeah, which is a couple nights ago. Yeah. Well, yeah, I did upload Iron Man. That's right. Yeah, it sounds like there's no, like, actual end credit scene. Yeah, I sit there waiting, and then and here it is, and yeah. nothing goes to the main Marvel, Marvel Studios. Studios. Yeah. Well, so, overall, uh, enjoyable movie for a Hulk movie. Uh, it was weird that he got, like, a, a basically a remake so early, or so close to the, the shitty one that yeah, came out before it. But I think it was bad enough they wanted to... I just yeah put it, <laughs> put it behind him yeah, <laughs> yeah. Too much. well that that's it right there's no more there's no secret scenes in this mm-hmm. movie so uh, it kind of sucks I wish there they should have just put that Robert Downey Jr. thing at the very very right end here. I don't know it, it wasn't like the one in Iron Man where they could really pull it off I don't know yeah but. I think that's why they started doing mid credit scenes because, like, the mid credit scene is the one that matters, and the very end scene is kind of just for, for shits and giggles. Mm. It's because I don't think most people will wait till the very end. Yeah. And in most um, credits, the first credits you see are all nicely animated, and it's just usually main actors and, like, director and producer and stuff. Yeah, like the and then it goes with just them no just scrolling up, yeah. you know, with all the names of all the animators and stuff. So it's usually the animated credits, 
then the scene that matters, mm. and then roll the rest of the credits, and then just a fun scene with the shawarma and Harvard the Duck. Mm-hmm. So it's the mid credit scene nowadays that matters. Right. And so I wish this had that had been a mid credit scene and something else at the very end. I don't know why, but I could have figured something out, but Yeah. Anyway, that was our podcast commentary for 2008's The Incredible Hulk. Join in next time when we do Iron Man 2, because that was the next one that they made. They need to turn out Iron Man before they did anything else, because Iron Man was so popular. Right. And this didn't actually do that so well. well yeah. So they had to do something else before they got rolling on everything else. But yeah, next we'll do Iron Man 2. And until then, we are your hosts, Movie Master Mike. And Boston Boy. Reminding you to speak your geek. Balance your geek. With Geekquilibrium. No! <laughs> <laughs>